Let's look at verse 4. <clears throat> According as he has chosen us in him. So these spiritual blessings at verse 3 is according. See that? It is according as he has chosen us in him. Based on his choosing that we would be in Christ. So if you're in Jesus Christ, you're chosen. Long before what? Before the foundation of the world. So a long time ago, before the world even existed over there, God already chose you to have access and blessing to the spiritual blessings up there. So that is an incredible blessing. And then the Calvinists just have to ruin it for you. They have to ruin that blessing for you. They ruin the, I mean, all of us are like, wow, that is awesome, praise the Lord. And nothing beats it than a Calvinist saying, well, that's not for you, that's just for me. Yeah. <laughs> because Calvinism, remember, Calvinism teaches that God elects which one would be saved and which one would be lost. Yeah. So that's Calvinism over there. Now, Calvinists would like to say, no, you're not representing us correctly. No, I'm representing you correctly, okay? You, wicked Calvinists, they always say, you're misrepresenting us, misrepresenting us. No, I'm representing you exactly, okay? <laughs> So basically, I'm not going to explain myself over here. You don't deserve it. So I'll just keep on going with my teaching. So Calvinism, they believe that God elects those long before the foundation of the world who would be in, who would be in him, who would be saved, who would be a part of his heavenly kingdom. So that's what they all insist. So then all the other people who went to hell, why did they die and go to hell? Because God did not choose them. God did not elect them. That's a cruel God. So an atheist has the right to say that that's a cruel God over there. So you got to realize over here that, no, God, he offered salvation to everybody. But it says over here he chose us before the foundation of the world. Okay, let me make it easy for you. Verse 4, according as he had chosen us, who are the us? In Him before the foundation of the world. Okay, this is very simple. Long before the foundation of the world, God chose those who are in Jesus Christ to be able to gain the spiritual blessings. Oh, isn't that simple? All right, isn't that simple? Those who are in Jesus Christ, who receive... Okay, how many of you are in Jesus Christ, receive Christ for your salvation? If you did, then the Lord, He already said, those people who receive my Son for salvation then I already chose them that they're going to gain all this blessing. So then if there's a Catholic who says, no, I want to get saved my own way, sorry, God chose those who would be in Jesus Christ, not your terms of salvation, not your uh, definition of Jesus. God says, if you choose my son for your salvation, if you receive salvation by grace through faith, not by works, then those are the people chosen to rule over the world. Black lives matter, and we're going to get our little bit of our kingdom and get back. God's like, no, I chose yeah. the Christians. Amen. That's intolerance. I don't care if that's intolerance. I choose it. That's what God says. That's the idea, okay? That's the idea, okay? It's that simple. So it's based on what's the Calvinism weakness? What's one pivotal argument you got to know? In every Calvinist verse, find, find, Find a condition. Whenever you find a Calvinist verse, see if there's a condition in there. Chosen before the foundation of the world. See that? That proves God elected people before, long before the creation of the world. Based on the condition that they're in Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord chose them long before the foundation of the world. That's the key weakness in Calvinist arguments that you want to remember, okay? That's important for debates, you want to know. I just gave it away. By the way, if that's not enough, the Calvinists were so blind not to see the last part of verse 3. That's why we receive spiritual blessings, right? He chose us for that, right? Uh, spiritual blessings in heavenly places in what? Christ. In Christ, colon, he explains it there. According as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world. See that? It's based on the condition in Christ. Wow. The Calvinist is not going to pay attention to that, will it? They're not going to look at that. All right, now let's keep reading the next part of verse 4. So, 
those who are in Jesus Christ, they're chosen long before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. In other words, that if you're in Jesus Christ, then long before the foundation of the world, God said that you're going to be holy. No one's going to find blame in you. They can't blame you for anything. Find fault in you. Before God himself, before him. Why? Because it's all based in love. So the Catholic and the Muslim might argue, your religion's totally unfair. I mean, to say that God forgives all iniquities based on just simply believing the gospel. What if you mess up in sin in the future? I don't believe that God would overlook that one. See, what they, what they ignore is, you're right, actually. I am in sin, and you can find blame in me. But God, for some weird reason, long before the foundation of the world, the Lord God, you're right, Mr. Muslim. You're right, Mr. Catholic. It is unfair to God. Yeah. It is unfair to God. But based on love, see, in love, he said that I would be holy and without blame. That's, good. that's a great that's good. verse. That's, 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 that's almost a verse mm -hmm. pretty much for eternal security. Wow. See that? So based on such great love, great love, he would say, you're holy without blame. But God, you can find fault in me. I know, but because I love you, I don't find sin in you. You grieve the Holy Spirit of God from day to day with your sin and you let him down. But based on his love, he says, you know what? I, you know, I know you grieve the Holy Spirit, but guess what? I can't count that as sin. Amen. I don't see sin in you. you you're still holy. You're still holy. Love. <clears throat> Man, that's a great God. Another thing over here at verse 4, another weakness to Calvinism is that notice that before the foundation of the world, if the Calvinist wants to argue that you're in Jesus Christ, all right? So, okay, uh, in him before the foundation of the world. So it doesn't mean the condition that you're in Christ that God chose you before the foundation of the world. That's how a Calvinist might argue. Mm -hmm. They might argue, no, it's saying that you were in Christ before the foundation of the world. That's what they're going to say. Well, that's stupid. Okay, so then you're telling me this. Okay, so then all of you were in Christ Jesus, and then when Adam and Eve sinned, according to God's eternal decree and will, he says you're going to go in Satan, and then I guess that you're going to go back in Jesus Christ. One in the world, man. You think God's, they think God's that dumb. You're going to be in Christ forever. Yay! Okay, here you are in the devil. Oh, okay, you go back in Jesus Christ later on. Yay! Stupidity, man. They think God is stupid like this. All right? Calvinists all admit this. We were all a child of the devil before we got saved. All right? So then what happened? You lost your place in Christ. You can't do that. So a Calvinist who believes in eternal security, they believe on that. It's a form of lordship salvation, though, but let's yeah. skip that. Calvinists believe in eternal security. If they believe in eternal security in Christ, trick them, okay? Trick these guys because they always play games with you, okay? So Ephesians 1.4, you're telling me that, uh, okay, I think I'm going to have to go along with you, so you caught me. So... I'm in, uh, so before the foundation of the world, I'm in Christ. Correct. And that cannot be undone. It's eternally secure. That's right. Amen. Okay, I caught you. Okay, I caught you. You're wrong. We were in Satan, so you broke God's eternal yeah. security then. Uh, How you get these stupid Calvinists, I'm so sorry, but the reason why I do that is listen to them in their debates. They're yeah. dishonest yeah. people. Yeah. All right? I wouldn't kick them so hard if I didn't know how they debate. They're totally dishonest people. These people like to talk like Jehovah Witnesses and Seventh-day Adventists. And if, you, and if you think I mean, you haven't talked to them enough. You didn't witness to souls and have a compassion for souls like I do. If you had a compassion for souls <clears throat> and done a soul winning, you know what it's like to talk to not just one, but multiple Jehovah Witnesses, multiple Seventh-day Adventists, and multiple Calvinists who know their Bible right. in the wrong way. 
And if you talk to those kind of people, you notice that they're very dishonest in talking like this. So play their game. You know how you win a debate? This is how I find out how I win debates with them. You play along in their game, make them feel like that they caught you, oh, and then, yeah. then after that, turn the tables on them. Yeah. Then let's see them lie their way around that. <sighs> Bunch of liars, man. It just makes me angry. So that's why I'm te- So anyways, all right, let, let's, go, let's look at verse 5. Maybe we should go back to Revelation, you know. <laughs> All right, let's look at verse 5. Having predestinated us unto the adoption of children. So this is a Calvinist favorite verse. They'll combine verse 4 and 5 together. That, pre, that you were predestinated. Predestinated. All right. Some of you who don't know what that means, uh, let me give a dummy version. Pre, uh, your destination, your destiny. Pre, beforehand. That's the idea. So then before your destiny was made... It was already ordained. So they would say that long before the foundation of the world, God predestinated you. So your destiny was already made beforehand that uh, you would become the elect. You would be saved. What about the other person who didn't receive Christ? Well, uh, they're just doomed to hell. God didn't choose them for predestination, which is sad. That's a, that's a dumb doctrine. But let's see over here. Predestinated. They got it wrong at this verse. This is not the context of salvation. They confuse predestination as you, uh, God chose you to get saved long before your destiny and your destiny was already made. No, that's false because look at over here. Five. They didn't read. Having predestinated us, what? Unto... The adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself. So notice right here, it is uh, to be adopted as children. Look at verse 6. To the praise of the glory of his grace. The predestination is that you become his children. Now look at Romans chapter 8, all right? Romans chapter 8. <clears throat> Romans chapter 8. So here's the idea. This is what they don't understand. All right? Remember, according as he hath chosen us in him, right? So based on the condition in Christ, is that correct? If you receive Christ for your salvation, all right, you're predestinated to be his children. So this is actually a verse not supporting Calvinism, but a verse proving eternal security. Because some people think that you can lose your salvation. But actually, how can you lose your salvation when you become, when God says, no, you're predestinated to become my son? Isn't that wonderful? I mean, is Jesus not the son of God? Yes. All right, do you think Jesus can become the son of Satan? Of course not. Why? Because it's irreversible. He's the son of God. If God shows you that you're going to be my son, that's irreversible. You can't just undo that and make that person a, a son of the devil. So that's the power. That's the preparation. If you receive Christ for your salvation, I'm sorry, if you want to go to hell, if you want to put a tattoo on your forehead and say, I am the son of Satan or whatever, too late, man. Your soul is bought underneath the blood of Christ. You become a child of God. That cannot be undone. Amen. All right, let's look at the book of Romans chapter 8. Now notice at verse 28. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. For whom he did foreknow, he also did what? Predestinate to be uh, what? Conform to the image of his son. Why? Look at that right there. It's not saying that uh, he predestinated you to receive Jesus Christ for your salvation. No, the predestination is you're going to be conformed as God's child. That's, good, preacher. That's the predestination. So how many of you have received Christ for your salvation? If you've done that, guess what? You're already predestinated to be his child. Yeah. Now, that's as Calvinist as we will go. You know what the Calvinism is? The Calvinism is 
you have no free choice. After you made the free choice, after you made the free choice of receiving Christ for your salvation, you don't have the free choice to become a child of the devil. That's the Calvinism right there. So we're better Calvinists, I'd say, than the, than the original Calvinists. So you see, you cannot undo, uh, uh, whether, no matter how, much you, how hard you try, it's too late. You become his child. You know why? That's a great verse. It's, uh, you're adopted. Is that what I said? Go back to the verse, Ephesians. Ephesians. We're actually better than the Calvinists because Calvinists, they don't believe that, uh, they don't believe that no matter what you do in this life, that you're always a child of God. No, instead, people like Paul Washer, they interrogate your salvation. If they see you live wickedly, they're like, you were never a child of God to begin with. So we're actually better Calvinists than those Calvinists, actually. We're saying, hey, it doesn't matter what you do. Too late. You become, you're a child of God. You can't undo that. So these Calvinists like to put free will in here that, oh, all you do in your sin, you aren't genuinely a child of God. 